Welcome back to In Focus. Not only do we have an energy emergency in America, but now our emergency energy reserves are having emergencies of their own. This as the Strategic Petroleum Reserves have hit their lowest level since 1985, another record for the Biden administration. We currently have about 461 barrels of oil as of this month. Compare that to January of 2021 when we had 638 million barrels. This as the Biden administration has been releasing a million barrels of oil per day recently, but has also withdrawn several million more barrels to ship off overseas to our enemies. And all of this as we approach wintertime when we need that oil the most. You may remember that Biden has declared war on energy independence, halting drilling on federal lands and sending US, the U.S. spiraling into an energy crisis the likes of which we haven't seen in decades, at least. But the good news is that just a few days ago, a federal court blocked Biden's federal gas and oil leasing moratorium. Judge Terry Dowdy issued a statement saying that Biden, quote, lacks any authority to implement such a moratorium adding that the court finds Section 208 of Executive Order 14008 is ultra, ultra virus beyond the authority of the President of the United States and in violation of the OCSLA and the MLA, and that even the President cannot make significant changes to the OCSLA and or the MLA that Congress did not delegate. Meanwhile, there's a little bit of confusion, though, because after signing the Inflation Reduction Act into law, outlets began reporting that Biden approved the largest gas and oil lease sale in American history as the act reinstates lease sale 257, which is an oil and gas sale stretching more than 80 million acres across Mexico's Gulf. It sounds like great news, sounds confusing considering what you just heard, but there's a catch to it. And I want to bring in Mark Morano. He's the founder of The Climate Depot and author of the new book coming out this month, The Great Reset, Global Elites and Permanent Lockdowns. Mark, it is great to have you on the program. So we're seeing some conflicting reporting here, if you will. Uh, a judge halted Biden's moratorium, but Biden just approved the largest oil gas lease sale in U.S. history in the Inflation Reduction Act. What is the catch to this? Because you have even conservative outlets reporting that as if it's a good thing, but there is a catch to it. What is that? Well, the catch here is since day one in President Biden's administration, he has not only shut down the oil and gas drilling on federal lands, but he's he's gone after pipelines, uh, the most famous being the Keystone Pipeline and shutting that down. He's also implemented financial strategies, a, a la ESG through his Department of Treasury, to defund fossil fuel projects. And they've also set up a regulatory landscape that would, no one would invest in fossil fuels in, in, in terms of any new projects. So against that backdrop, in order to get this Inflation Reduction Act through Congress, he had to make certain promises to Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, a big oil, gas, coal, fossil fuel state. And Manchin himself got a lot of special projects in pork barrel, you could call it, concessions. But most importantly, this is like taking 10 steps backwards on energy and then one step forward with this $81 million, uh, you know, the, 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 the least 257 that's part of this bill, and then claiming that he's pro fossil fuel. And I think this is what's confusing the media. It is by itself a positive step. However, it's still nine steps back from where Biden came in. So this gives them a very important tool. When Pete Buttigieg, when Secretary Granholm, when Joe Biden is pressed in press conferences by media, by activists, by people out on the on the either the campaign trail or out in middle America, they can now say that they are supporting fossil fuels, even though this is just a drop in the bucket from everything that they've stopped. So it's a way classic Washington can mm. speak out of both sides of their mouth. We're shutting down fossil fuels here. And oh, by the way, we opened up fossil fuels here because we know how important they are. But we're shutting them down over here because of the climate crisis. And then you add to that this lawsuit, which you mentioned, or the, the, the court case, which you mentioned, mm. that is going to play out on all of this kind of, uh, out, you know, across the Gulf of Mexico and offshore drilling as well. But what's interesting is even now, a lot of the congressmen, senator, groups affiliated with Al Gore, I'm seeing all the, their email and their chatter and their websites, they're already vowing to block this section of the oil of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the Manchin Biden climate bill, which allows more fossil fuels. So even though it's been approved by official Washington and voted for and signed by Joe Biden, the allies who push this bill are now going to go after and make sure that multiple levels of courts, 
legal hassles, regulatory roadblocks are put in place. And these can last for years. So on paper, Joe Biden passed this and he signed it. But in reality, it could be years away from this 81 million acres actually being developed for oil and gas. This is classic Washington. It can go any way you want it to. You can spin it any way you want. You can be pro-oil. You can be anti-oil. This is how it works in Washington. And I know I'm a little confused. So I hope I, I hope that made sense to you, Addison. No, it did make sense, especially the part where you say, you know, this in and of itself is a positive development, but there's all this context that, that when you apply it yes. is really we're, we're still so far behind where we used to be. It's the same thing with gas prices that we're seeing, Mark. You know, gas prices yes. are double, uh, about double what they were when Biden took office. And now, you know, they, they went up and up and up and up and up under President Biden. And then all of a sudden they start to come down a couple cents for like five seconds. And then they say, oh, look, I'm lowering gas prices yeah. for you. And I cannot believe the amount of people who are buying this line, the amount of people celebrating that this is a Biden win. He's lowering gas prices for the American people yeah. and saving them money. It's like, have you looked at a graph in your entire life? Have you looked at a gas <laughs> station prior to January, the January?